Thank you, Senator Colbeck. Senator Xenophon. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy President. Mr. Pres uh, Deputy President, at the outset, I would like to indicate my broad support for this bill, but I also believe this bill does not go far enough. I note Senator Colbeck's uh, comments uh, in relation to uh, the bureaucracy, and I'm always concerned about a new bureaucracy being created. And I think that uh, Senator Colbeck has had uh, has a unique in insight into uh, manufacturing and into our food processing sector with the inquiry that he. Uh, uh, very capably chaired uh, that I was pleased to be a part of, which indicated some of the problems in the processing sector. And there were a whole range of factors, uh, uh, part of the supply chain issues, uh, the duopoly, a whole range of other factors in terms of, of cost pressures on the industry. Uh, and I think that gave us a unique insight into that sector. And I think you can extrapolate some issues there about the problems with Australian manufacturing and the issue of jobs being lost from manufacturing and the sorts of jobs that have been lost for the sorts of projects that this particular piece of legislation will relate to. Um, Australian manufacturers are under threat. They are competing against a high Australian dollar and cheap overseas imports, and they are struggling to survive. Fortunately, the Australian dollar has come uh, off the boil a bit, about 11 per cent, which is unambiguously good for the economy, and I hope it goes down even further in a way that will give our farmers, our manufacturers, a fighting chance. Now, I appreciate this bill is an attempt to support Australian manufacturers and contractors and to ensure they get a slice of the investment in both the public and private sector, but there are still too many hurdles in the way. A report from the Prime Minister's Task Force on Manufacturing in August last year estimated that 950,000 people were employed in the sector, and it contributes 8 per cent of our gross domestic product directly. That doesn't include the significant amount it contributes indirectly through flow-on effects to other businesses. The multiplier, Mr Deputy President, is quite significant. It also comprises 29 per cent of Australia's exports, despite the high dollar. But it also stated, this report also stated that over the last four years, over 100,000 jobs have disappeared. 100,000 jobs, 100,000 families around the nation have been, ex have been affected by this uh, plunge in employment in our manufacturing sector. The report also estimates that another 85,600 jobs at a minimum may be lost in the next five years. I believe that is unacceptable. We need to actually tackle that. If we lose our manufacturing sector, we will be at a global disadvantage. Not only will we lose hundreds of thousands of jobs, but also our self-sufficiency. And also, Mr Deputy President, we should look at what the Obama administration has been involved with in the United States that we've seen a renaissance of the manufacturing industry in the United States, a turnaround uh, in the United States. Uh, and I think it's interesting that in that country, in terms of the bailout funds given for General Motors, that the United States government took an equity in General Motors. And I think it's not unreasonable uh, to, to say that if there are uh, further assistance to, the, uh, to, uh, to industry, that we should look at the model that's been used in the United States uh, in terms of at least um, the funding being secured as against assets and the like. I think we need to have a debate about that. It is plain common sense that Australian contractors and manufacturers should have the first chance of tendering for government-funded projects. Unfortunately, the tender process often doesn't look further than the flat price, so an Australian company can lose out to a cheaper overseas com company, but that doesn't take into account the flow-on effect to the economy, the multiplier effect of a company that is based here, that is employing people in this country, that is paying Australian taxes, uh, that is actually contributing directly to the, uh, the economy in a way that we may not see uh, with other entities. An Australian company, although it might be slightly more expensive in dollar terms, may be a much better deal for our economy. Surely that justifies paying uh, some extra taxpayer dollars especially considering that those paid to an overseas company might simply go offshore. I acknowledge that this bill aims to ensure that any company applying for tender has to meet certain requirements of, for want of a better term, Australian content, whether they are applying for a public, public or privately funded project. But again, I don't think this bill goes far enough. Uh, and I think we also uh, need to look at what has happened in the United States, where there has been a turnaround in the manufacturing industry where there are uh, uh, issues of procurement. It's an issue that Senator Madigan, uh, my colleague Senator Madigan, has um, uh, campaigned on, has been very vocal on, uh, needs to be considered very closely. 
Now, there should be specific requirements to consider one-off costs versus overall economic effect. Uh, I will also be moving an amendment aimed at ensuring companies are aware of anti-dumping and countervailing uh, issues. Um, under this amendment, project proponents or operators of new re relevant facilities will have to ensure that are, they are not using goods or services that contravene Australia's anti-dumping or countervailing laws. Um, in practice, this means that contractors will need to look more closely at the overseas products and services they are using to ensure there is no possibility of dumping or countervailing. Uh, naturally, contractors are not able to make formal judgments of whether dumping or countervailing is occurring. However, there should be a level of responsibility in terms of abiding by Australian laws in this respect. Uh, and in case uh, this, because the, uh, the gag will be applied on this debate, and I, I hope, and if there isn't enough time to consider amendments, I will speak to uh, that amendment on sheet 7400. Uh, the aim of this amendment is to require the contractors take every reasonable step to ensure they do not use dumped goods or services in major products projects. Dumping occurs when an item is sold in Australia below the cost it would normally retail for in its domestic market. Dumping is one of the biggest challenges facing Australian manufacturers. It is impossible to compete with the low cost of these goods, and the process to mount an anti-dumping case against the importers is a long, complicated and costly process. Given that the aim of this bill is to increase the use of the Australian workforce in major projects, the issue of dumping must be addressed. Uh, late, late last year, we saw the case mounted by the Blue Scope Steel, company Blue Scope Steel against cheap imported steel products. At the time, Blue Scope estimated it had lost $50 million due to the dumping. While Blue Scope has had some success in that area, there are still problems if duties are imposed by customs. There are multiple stories of importers making slight changes to products or even changing the location in which they are produced to avoid duties. The intention of this amendment is not that contractors must make a formal determination of whether a product has been dumped in Australia. Instead, it requires them to take reasonable steps to ensure that the goods do not contravene any of the provisions of the Customs Act relating to anti-dumping. So, if it appears that a good or service is being sold below cost, it is reasonable to assume that dumping is occurring. Similarly, some projects require items to be made specifically for that project because they exceed normal specifications or are not readily available, for example, a steel girder of unusual size. Where there is an arrangement for the manufacture of these unique items, the contractor will have a better idea of the relevant costs involved and may decide the item could be in contravention of anti-dumping provisions because of the comparative pricing or quotes they have received for the work. Uh, anti-dumping law, Mr Deputy President, is incredibly complex and this amendment does not require contractors to make formal decisions. It does, however, put anti-dumping on the radar and gives Australian companies a better chance of competing against uh, dumped goods or services. And I note that tonight there will be uh, a debate, uh, as truncated as it is, in relation to uh, dumping, a very important issue uh, in terms of Australian jobs being needlessly lost through unfair practices. And I should also note uh, that the Australian Greens will also be moving amendments in relation to the major product threshold and to allow the Minister to designate a project as a major project for the purpose of the Act, and I uh, broadly support that. Uh, I also note that um, uh, my uh, colleague, Senator Madigan, uh, has, uh, will be moving an amendment that I've co-sponsored, that he's instigated, that the, to change the current major project threshold, at the moment it's $500 million, um, a limit of $20 million is more appropriate, and Senator Madigan can speak to that. Um, to be truly effective, the measures in this bill should be more widely applied. Uh, I think $20 million is a, quite a reasonable threshold, and that's a threshold it should apply to. Otherwise, uh, all the principles, all the criteria in this bill will be simply too narrowly applied. It, this, the, the amendment that Senator Madigan will be moving, which I am very pleased to co-sponsor, will ensure that a significant number of projects in Australia will have to comply with the requirements in this bill, and that will further support Australian jobs. So, ultimately, I support the general intent of this bill. I note the, question, uh, the matters raised by Senator Colbeck, which I think were quite reasonable, about other cost pressures on Australian industry. But I think it is also important that there is a level playing field when we are tendering for these, uh, in these major projects where taxpayers' funds are involved, and we need to consider once and for all what the true benefit is of having uh, local companies, local jobs being involved 
in the manufacture, uh, in, the, uh, in the production uh, involved for major projects, uh, and the multiplier effect cannot be understated. And my fear is that if we lose uh, more and more manufacturing industry in this country, which we must avoid at all costs, we lose that base of innovation, we lose that technological advantage, we actually lose the skills that we'll never, ever get back. And I think we should look at what the United States has been doing in recent times, where they have seen a renaissance in their manufacturing industry, where they've had policies similar to this, as I understand it, uh, which has uh, encouraged that renaissance in Australian manufacturing industry. And to any of the, uh, to the, to the workers at Holden's, uh, General Motors Holden's, that might be listening in my home state of South Australia, uh, I, I believe that this, this bill uh, will help and it will uh, make in the sense that it opens up a debate about procurement policies that are reasonable and fair for Australian manufacturers and Australian jobs. So I support this bill and I look forward to uh, the amendments uh, that I'll be moving, uh, also, rece <coughs> also receiving the serious consideration of my colleagues.